So here we have to see what the important areas there are there in modern Indian history. Especially for group A examination, we have so many areas. One is uh, Indian geography that is there, world geography that is there. In the same way, Indian history that is there. In Indian history, we have only modern, ancient and medieval they are not asking. According to new syllabus, what happened? Only modern India that is asked in the examination for general studies. You know, second paper, second paper AP history already we are discussing. Okay, AP history that is 75 marks and uh, Indian polity, constitution, governance that is uh, 75 marks. And uh, third paper, Indian economy as well as uh, AP economy, you know well. So, in first paper, especially for 150 marks, Indian history covers nearly 20 to 25 marks. Indian history, modern Indian history. Modern Indian history. This modern Indian history covers. Okay, this modern Indian history covers how many marks? 20 to 25 marks will, uh, we can expect from modern Indian history. What areas we have in this modern Indian history? It begins with uh, actually uh, there is uh, decline of Mughals. How this Mughal Empire came to end like that? It begins with uh, a decline of Mughals. That is one of the important areas. After that, advent of Europeans. How these Europeans came to India? Advent of this advent of Europeans. Advent of Europeans. That is one of the areas you know well. Who were the first one to come to India? The Portuguese were the first people to come to India. The second people, the Dutch. Third people to come to India, the British. Fourth one, Danes are Danish. Last people to come to India, the French. So like that, they were the people, they were the Europeans came to India for the purpose of trade and commerce. So here they came to India for the purpose of trade and commerce. First people to come to India, the Portuguese. Second one, the Dutch. Third one, the British. Fourth one, Danes are Danish. La th fourth one, last one, the French. So, like that, they were the people who came to India. And we are going to see, so where did they establish their settlements, trading centers? How did they continue? Then in, uh, India, at the same time, in Andhra, like that. Especially in Andhra history, we are going to see that. But in India, which are the important centers that we are going to see. At the same time, so in this especially, the British only dominated in every activity. Almost in many activities, what happened? The British only dominated. Okay. So there is the French and British especially, they wanted to establish their supremacy, their power in India. But at last, who got supremacy? Who established this uh, colonial empire in India was the British. Right. That's why previously India was called British India. Prior to independence, they were calling British India. But afterwards, what happened? It was called uh, independent India. Right. So, like that, we have to see advent of Europeans as well. Then we have to see one of the important areas, Carnatic Wars. This Carnatic, Carnatic Wars, that is one of the areas we have to see. How many Carnatic Wars? Carnatic Wars, they were also called, Carnatic Wars we are calling, otherwise, they were also called Anglo-French Wars. We are calling Anglo-French Wars. Carnatic Wars, otherwise, we are calling them Anglo-French Wars. Three Carnatic Wars are there. How many Carnatic Wars are there means? There are three Carnatic Wars. Okay. So, you see this uh, Carnatic Wars. Advent of Europeans. Who are the Europeans who come to India? Advent of Europeans. First people to come to India, the Portuguese. Okay. In Advent of. Advent of Europeans. In Advent of Europeans. The first people to come to India, the Portuguese. The Portuguese, they were the first people to come to India. Second people, the Dutch. The Dutch were the second people to come to India. Third one, the British were the people to come to India. The British. Fourth people to come to India, the Danish or Danes. Danes, we are calling otherwise Danish. The last people to come to India, the French. The French, they were the last people to come to India. Like this, they were the people who came to India. Okay, in which year they came to India, how long they continued in India, that is also a point. In which year they entered India. The first people, the Portuguese came to India in the year 1498, you know, well. Second one, they came to India in the year 1605. The British in the year 1608. 
the Danes in the year 1620 and the French in the year 1665. So like this they came to India. In which year they came to India in the sense you have to remember the years. Okay, after that if you see. So when did they leave India? In which year they left India? That is also important. When did they leave India? If you see this, when did they leave India in the sense? They left India. So in the year, first people, the Portuguese left India. So in which year? First people to come to India, the Portuguese, you know well. Okay. So here, so this the first people to come to India. So these Portuguese people, they continued in India till 1961. Second one, they continued in India till 1759, but originally they left uh, later. But they started in the year 1759. So by 1790, uh, 95, it's like that, they completely left. But they start in the year 1759 with the Battle of Bedara. With the Battle of Bedara only. The British, we know well, 1947, India became free from the clutches of this war. In the year 1845, they people left India. In the year 1955, according to Indian Citizenship Act, Indian Citizenship Act was passed in the year 1955. According to this Indian Citizenship Act only, the French at last they left India. Then the first people to come to India, the last people who left India, the Portuguese. Second people to come to India, and the first people who left India, the Dutch. Third people to come to India, third people who left India, the British. Fourth people to come to India, Danes or Danish. And they are the second people who left India. The last one, the French, you know, were like that. So this advent of Europeans, you have to remember, right? Next topic in modern Indian history. So one topic we have to say is, okay. After this, we have to see Anglo-French wars, otherwise they are called Carnotic Wars. We are calling them Carnotic. This Carnotic Wars we are calling, otherwise they are also called. So this Anglo-French Wars, Anglo-French. This Anglo-French Wars we are calling. How many Anglo-French Wars are Carnotic Wars? It is for supremacy only, to establish their supremacy only, they have taken place in India, right? Anglo-French wars, otherwise we are calling them Carnotic Wars. This Carnotic Wars, they took place. Three Carnotic Wars, they are there. First Carnotic, first one 1746 and 1748, that is the first one. Second one, that is in the year 1749 and 1754. Third one, 1756 and 1763, like this. Three Carnotic Wars, they took place. First one ended with the Treaty of Ex La Chapel. This treaty was Treaty of Treaty of Ex La Chapel. Ex La Chapel. Treaty of Ex La Chapel. This one is Treaty of Pondicherry. Treaty of Pondicherry and Treaty of Paris. Like that, you have to understand these Anglo-French wars. That is also one of the important areas. We have to see in this modern Indian history. So after that, if you see Carnotic, after Carnotic Wars or Anglo-French Wars, one of the areas we have to see is Anglo-Mysore Wars. One of the areas we have to see in this was Anglo-Mysore. This Anglo-Mysore Wars, that is one of the areas we have to see. Anglo-Mysore Wars. Anglo-Mysore Wars, that is also one area we have to see. How many Anglo-Mysore Wars they took place? So, because of this, they established supremacy. They started what in the sense? Waging wars also. Between Mysore rulers and the British only, these wars they took place, hence we are calling so Anglo Mysore wars. Anglo Mysore wars, four in number. How many wars took place in the sense? Four Anglo Mysore wars they took place. First one, 1766 and 1769. 1766 and 1769, that is the first one. Second one, 1780. 1784. Third one, 1790 and 1792. So, fourth one, it was started in 1799 and ended in the year 1799 itself. So, like that, four Anglo Mysore wars they are there. How many Anglo Mysore? Four Anglo Mysore wars they are there, right? That is one you have to remember. This was ended with the Treaty of Madras. This was ended with the Treaty of Madras. You have to remember Treaty of Madras. This one, Treaty of Mangalore, Treaty of Mangalore, Treaty of this Mangalore, 
ट्रीटी आफ् मंगलूर ट्रीटी आफ् श्रीरंगपटम श्रीरंग श्रीरंगपन ट्रीटी आफ् श्रीरंगपट ओके ट्रीटी आफ् श्रीरंगपन दैस मैन सो आ लास्ट वन नो ट्रीटी ट्रीटी डिट नाट टेक् प्लेस बिका टिपू सुलता वाज शॉर्ट दैट हईदर अली टू सुलता मेन लीडर्स अंड अट लास्ट इन दिस फोर्थ आंग्लो मैसूर वाज टू सुलता वाज शॉर्ट दैट विथ दैट Treaty did not take place. Treaty did not take place. Originally, who were the rulers of Mysore rulers? Mysore was administered by Wadiyar dynasty. Wadiyar dynasty. Once again, this Mysore kingdom that was handed over to Wadiyars only. Chikka Krishna Raj of Wadiyar three existed during that time. It was the grandson of Chikka Krishna Raj of Wadiyar one. Then that was given to handed over to Chikka Krishna Raj of Wadiyar three. So like that. so there is all these important things we have to discuss then we have to say one of the important areas so establishment of british rule how did they establish british rule that also we have to see right so then after we have to see 1857 revolt so there is the, so at the same time we have to see this anglo sikh wars we have to see anglo maratha wars also we have to see so between marathas and the british only this the wars took place since we are calling maratha wars After Shivaji, <coughs> Shivaji Sasan Shambhuji came to power. Shambhuji's brother Raja Ram came to power. Then Raja Ram's wife Tara Bai administered. Between Tara Bai and Sahu, battle took place. Battle of Kade, we are calling. Battle of Kade. In that, Sahu got victory, but Sahu was inefficient. With this incident, so Peshwas started administration. In the Peshwas period, only Angla Maratha was. Between Marathas and the British Anglo-Maratha wars that took place, there are also three number. So we have to discuss all these uh, Anglo-Maratha. Then, so Anglo-Sikh wars, Anglo-Sikh wars also small in uh, so this one area we can say that also we have to discuss. So then after one of the important areas we have to see is 1857 revolt. 1857 revolt that also we have to see. 1857 revolt is also called how? This is very very important because sometimes questions that are repeatedly asked from this topic. 1857 revolt is also called Sepoy's Sepoy's mutiny. It was called how? It was called Sepoy's mutiny. So because Sepoy only participated in this maximum, that's why we are calling Sepoy's mutiny. This was started from Meerut. Meerut is in Uttar Pradesh. Who commented that the Sepoy's mutiny is a revolt between? Civilized and uncivilized. T. R. Holmes. Who commented that 1857 revolt is a great rebellion? Ashok Mehta commented like that. It was called first war of Indian independence by V. D. Savarkar. V. D. Savarkar commented that first war of Indian independence. You have to remember all the comments. Many comments are there. Okay. It was called. So there is. Uh, Hindu Muslims united together against the British, like that was said. It was also said that it is neither a Sepoy's revolt nor there is a struggle like that. So many comments are there. We are going to discuss all the comments that also that one. Then we have to see what are the causes for this outbreak of Sepoy's mutiny. What administrative causes are there? Social causes are there? Economic causes are there? Religious causes, military causes, immediate cause like that. We are going to see. And who were the leaders in different different places in Delhi during that time? Last Mughal Emperor Delhi. Who was the leader for this? So in Delhi, last Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah II and his commander Bakht Khan. Bakht Khan led army in Delhi. They were the leaders in Delhi, like that we can say. Okay. So in Bihar, Kunwar Singh and Amar Singh were the leaders in Bihar. In Jhansi, Jhansi Lakshmi Bai was leader. Okay. In Jhansi, who was leader? Jhansi Lakshmi Bai was leader. So for this one, okay. So like that, we have to see all the leaders, all the leaders who participated in this. Uh, that also. Then why these Indian soldiers they were completely defeated in the hands of the British? What are the reasons for the defeat? That also we have to. Then so there is what result is there with this 1857 revolt? That also we have to see. So like this, all important points and what important books are there? Who wrote the book 1857? Name of the book, title itself 1857. Name of the book is 1857. It was written by S. N. Sain. This book is written by S. N. Sain. History of Sepoy Mutiny in India. That's by K. E. Okay. First War of Indian Independence by B. D. Savarkar. Like that. 
number of books that are there that are recording this 1857 are revolved. That's one of the important areas we are going to see. So then we have to see this. Okay. Governor Generals and Viceroys. In the last we can see and in the middle also we can see. Governor Generals and Viceroys, one of the areas. Who are the Governor Generals? Governor Generals. We are calling them Governor Generals. From 1773 to 1857, they are called Governor Generals. 1773 to 1857, they are called how? They are called Governor Generals. Okay, first one, Lord Warren Hastings. Lord Warren Hastings. In the beginning, they were called Bengal Governor General. Governor General of Bengal like that, they used to call. But later, what happened? So, from Lord William Bentinck onwards, they were called Governor General of India. Governor General of India like that, it was said. Right? So, like this. So, these 15 members are. How many are there? 15 members they are there. Governor Generals are 15 number. Coming to Viceroy's. Coming to Viceroy's, if you see, they are 20 in number. So they are 20 in number. From 1858 to 1947, they are called Viceroy's. Viceroy's we are calling. First Viceroy, Lord Canning. And the last Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten. In 1947, in the month of March only, he was appointed and continued till independence. Lord, last one, last Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten. He only prepared India Independence Act. India Independence Act that was prepared by this one only. Like that. So that all you have to remember. So I have to remember. So all these important uh, so points like that it was just said. Okay. So all these important points we have to remember. Viceroy, Governor General, that is also one of the important area. So that we have to say. So after this one we have to see one of the important areas. Socio-religious renaissance movement in India. Socio-religious renaissance movement in India. Socio, socio-religious, socio-religious renaissance, socio-religious renaissance movement, movement, socio-religious renaissance movement in India. So here. It begins with the Brahma Samaj. Brahma Samaj that's in the year 1828 by Raja Ramu Mohanra, Young Bengal Movement 1829 by Henry Vivian Deruzio. After that, we have to say this uh, Prarthana Samaj, Atma Ram Pandranga 1867. So then we have to see Satyashodak Samaj, Mahatma Jyoti Rao Phule, Satyashodak Samaj 1873. Then Theosophical Society, Madam H. B. Blavatsky and Kalan Lolkot. Then 1875, Swami Dayan, the Saraswati, Sarya Samas, that also we have to see. Then 1884, Dakar Education Society. 1886, Muslim Education Society. Then we have to see Ramakrishna Mission, Servants of India Society, Yezava Movement, Self-Respect Movement. So many are there in this. Okay, many are there. Okay, Socio-Religious Renaissance Movement. Renaissance meaning is rebirth. Renaissance means what in the sense? Renaissance means rebirth. Whatever the social evils existed in the society during that time. Sati is a social evil. Child marriages, social evil. Child marriages, aged marriages. Okay. So then, Devadasi system, polygamy, prostitution, etc. Many existed in the society during that time. To abolish all these social evils only, this Renaissance movement that was started. Socio-religious Renaissance movement. Who is called? Father of socio-religious Renaissance movement in India. Raja Rama Mohan Rai. Raja, that's the title given by Mughal Emperor Akbar II. Rama Mohan Rai, that's the name. So he was called Raja Rama Mohan Rai. It's called Father of Socio Religious Naisans Movement in India. In Andhra, Kandakuri Virishalingam Bandru is called Father of Socio Religious Naisans in Andhra. He was called Andhra Vaitalika. Andhra Vaitalika, we are calling. Okay. So, at the same time, many titles they are there to Kandukuri Virishalingam Bandalu, we discuss in AP history, right? Like this, this is one of the areas we have to see. After this only, we have to see Indian National Movement in India. Indian National Movement. Indian National Movement, we have to see. In Indian, this Indian National Movement. Indian National Movement, we can see. Prior to this Indian National Movement, Okay, we are going to see organization, which organizations existed, 1884, okay, 
some Madras Mahas and Sabha, otherwise uh, some other Mahasabhas. So like that, prior to 1885 also we are going to see all this. 1885 to 1947 we are going to see. One is moderate era we are going to see, one is extremist era we have to moderate era. We are calling this one is moderate era we are calling. Second one is extremist era. This extremist era we are calling and we are calling Gandhian era. Gandhian era. Okay, moderate era, 1885 to 1905 only this continued as one. Second one, it was started in 1905, some said it is 1920. Some said that Mahatma Gandhi entered in 1917, that's why. So, this Gandhian era started in 1917 itself, it ended in 1917. But some other uh, historians commented that, no, Balagangadha Tilak at last passed away. So, as, as dead in the year 1920, till that time we have to consider like that. Anyhow, 1905-1920 like that it was said. Some others commented 1917 or 1918 like that. Okay. So, but here, so different opinions are there. No, nothing to worry. 1920 and 1947. We have to see all important events. Whether it is this coming under this one or this one. We have to see each and everything. Right. 1920-1947 is called Gandhian era. Because non-cooperation movement became a big movement by Mahatma Gandhi's. Okay. Especially non-cooperation movement that was started by Mahatma Gandhi. It became very popular movement, right? Mahatma Gandhi, even we are calling Gandhi an era 1922-1947 is called Gandhi an era. How many times Mahatma Gandhi became president of Indian National Congress? Only one time. That is in the year 1924 Belgaum session. That's in the year 1924 Belgaum session only. He became president of, chairperson of Indian National Congress. You have to remember all important points, right? So, like that, in moderate era 1885 to 1905, what important things that happened we are going to see. In extremist era 1905 to 1920, extremists Balagangadha, Tilak, Lal Aspatra, Vipin Chandrapal, Aravinda Ghosh, many leaders they were there in this extremist era we are calling. So, Gandhi era 1920, non cooperation movement we are going to see in this. After that, Chauri Chaura incident, that also one of the important incident we are going to see. Swaras party, Swaras party came into force in which year? In the year 1923 only Swaras party that was established. So, MNA days especially, C.R. Das, Chitranjan Das, Motilal Nehru they were the founders of Swaras party 1923. 1924 Gandhi, 1925 CPA party you know well. Communist party of India that was started in which year? In the year 1925 only. The first woman to become, Indian woman to become chairperson to Indian National Congress, Sarojin Naidu became chairperson in 1925. The first woman who became chairperson to INC was Ani B. Sent in the year 1970 in Calcutta session. Calcutta session headed by Ani B. Sent. Ani B. Sent belongs to Ireland. In which year this Ani B. Sent came to India? In the year 1893 only, she came to India and joined Theosophical Society. She became chairperson of Theosophical Society in the year 1907 with the death of Kalal Olcott. Kalal Olcott passed away in 1907. With that, Anivisin became chairperson to Theosophical Society that you have to remember. After that, even she participated in this one and Home Rule League that was started by this Anivisin. Home Rule League. Tilak and Anivisin both started this Home Rule League. First, it was started by Balagangadha Tilak, but it was maximum popularized in South India. So, by whom in the sense? It is Anibisent only. Anibisent started in the month of, so there is October like that, September, October like that. And Tilak started in the month of April. Okay, Tilak started in the month of April, 1916. So, that's why in South India, it became popular with this Anibisent only. She was called Iron Lady. Who was called Iron Lady? Anibisent was called. And if you send was called Iron Lady. Like that, here all these important points you have to remember. So, till last, so we have to discuss Simon Commission's visit to India in the year 1928. Sir John Simon, he was the chairperson, hence we are calling Simon Commission. Then, Salt Satyagraha started by Mahatma Gandhi in 1930. We have to discuss 1931, Gandhi, Irwin Pack. Then, Round Table Conferences. This Round Table Round table conferences. Round table conferences we had to see. First round table 1930, second round table 1931, third round table 1932. Round table conferences. Who was the chairperson for these three round table conferences? 
the then Prime Minister of Britain, Ramsay MacDonald. Who was the chairperson? Ramsay MacDonald. He was the chairperson for these three sessions. Okay, round table conferences. But all three round table conferences they were completely failed, we can say. Okay, they did not bring good result. The 1931 Gandhi Irwin Pact, you know well. 1932 communal award that also one of the important things which happened okay 1932 only Pune pact between Gandhi and Ambedkar what important points we have to see so then 1935 government of India act that is also an important act so all acts we are going to see 1909 we are going to see 1919 we are going to see 1935 also we are going to see so like that <coughs> important acts also we are going to then after 1942, if you see, 1942, if you see, the Spit India movement, that's the last movement that was started by Mahatma Gandhi. After that, Mahatma Gandhi did not start any movement. The last movement started by Gandhi was Spit India movement. In this movement only, Mahatma Gandhi gave a call, do or die, do or die. Unitedly, we have to participate in this national movement. Otherwise, it is better to die like that. Mahatma Gandhi gave a call. Even leaders were arrested. All the leaders they were arrested and they were imprisoned. But people only continued this. Pit India movement 1942. Right like that Pit India. Crips mission. Prior to that we had to say this Crips mission. After that 1943. INA Indian National Army that was started. INA that was started by Mohan Singh and Niranjan Gill. One is Mohan Singh and Niranjan Gill. They handed over this one too. Subhash Chandra Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose named this one as Ajad Hind Falls. And uh, so many divisions were established by this one. So there is especially IINA, Indian National Army, Ajad Hind Falls, we can see. Right? So like that, so there is, uh, he named Gandhi's uh, division at the same time. So there is Nehru division, Sardar Rolabai Patel. So like that, different names were opted. And... Uh, so, there is Subhash Chandra Bose, Subhash Chandra Bose only. The autobiography of Subhash Chandra Bose is, you know, the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi. My experiments with the truth, you know well. The autobiography of Subhash Chandra Bose is Indian struggle. Indian struggle, that's the autobiography of this one. So, like that, we are going to see each and every thing. The 1946, 1946 cabinet mission plan came. They established this constituent assembly. Constituent Assembly first meeting that was held on December 9th, 1946. Okay. Sachidananda Sinha was the temporary chairperson. After that, Sir Dr. Babu Rajaprasad is elected as permanent chairperson to this one. A drafting of constitution that took place. So, all these important areas at last. India Independence Act that was prepared by Lord Mountbatten. Hence, it was also called Mountbatten Plan. It is called how? It is called Batten. Mount Batten plan we are calling. Accordingly, what happened? India and Pakistan, they were separated. Two dominions became independent. So, India became independent thus 15th August 1947 and Pakistan became independent on 14th. One day before, they decided, okay, like that, Muhammad Ali Jinnah became first Governor General of this Pakistan. Coming to India, Indians asked, Vice Rap post that was once again uh, converted. Governor General post that was introduced. First Governor General to Independent India. First Governor General to Independent India, Lord Mountbatten. First Indian and last Indian to become Governor General of Independent India. See Rajgo Palachari. Like that, we are going to see this one after that. How this princely states joined hands with this Indian Union. That also we have to see one of the areas. After that, we have to see this Indian Republic. Now it became... So, then elections were conducted, Panchashil Agreement, SRC, we had to see States Reorganization Commission, SRC, States Reorganization Commission, Chairperson was Fazil Ali, this Fazil Ali was the Chairperson for this, since we are calling Fazil Ali Commission, right? So, like this, we are going to see all important areas. Thing is, whatever the things are there, we are here to explain you, but... Doing hard work is your responsibility. Without hard work, there is no question of getting success. That's why what it is said in the sense, everything lies in hard work. Okay. So, intelligence may fail sometimes. 
but hard work never fails okay that's why you have to do hard work automatically success will come to your footsteps okay so there is this is all uh, so syllabus what we have to discuss okay remaining other areas also we are small areas if there any that also we are going to see in this modern indian history right so these are all the topics we have to see and your responsibility especially again and again repeatedly you have to go through repeatedly you have to go through and you have to answer the questions okay multiple choice questions that's also important in this okay if you continue like this 100% we will get success in the examination okay thank you